and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood, and we're into July. Um, you know, it's just hard to believe, but uh, um, it, we've already seen the monsoons hitting, and uh, it's, it's warm out, it's humid out. Uh, we've already hit the dew points, and so uh, we're in full monsoon. Um, but uh, talking about monsoon season and things of that nature, because we're, we're going to be getting into farmer's market here, and the Cottonwood Farmer's Market is ongoing. I, I know Camp Verde has theirs, Sedona has a, a farmer's market. And um, around this area where we've got both um, Oak Creek and the Verde River, uh, it's amazing that the farmers markets, um, uh, they're out there and you just have to look for them. Um, ours in Cottonwood is uh, located at the Old Town, what we call the activity uh, park and the activity field now in, in Cottonwood, Arizona. Um, and there used to be a, a softball field facility back in behind City Hall and that's where our, ours is located. Um, wherever you live in either Camp Verde, Sedona, VOC or throughout the Verde Valley or if you are visiting, um, check out uh, you know the local farmers markets because they're incredible and um, we'll be talking here today uh, it's, it's we have a great great lineup here for you uh, we have uh, both Jack Teal who's our recreation coordinator who's in charge of the Cottonwood Farmers Market and then we also have um, we have Marshall Miglin and he's here from Sunnyside Farms and we're gonna be talking with Marshall as it pertains to actually um, uh, you know how the, the farmers markets in the area benefit you but mainly benefit the communities and uh, I think it's just a great thing it's, it's a lot of fun to see businesses especially farming activity uh, in and throughout the Verde Valley I've been here since 19 1990 and um, prior to that uh, uh, in southern Arizona so it's kind of fun to be up here and watch things how they work. Um, Jack as we uh, we take a look at uh, farmers markets um, we've got our farmers market that uh, goes from July 7th which actually is is uh, next week yep. and uh, just right after July 4th so you know we're starting things up so we go through till when? Uh, it's usually July through October, um, okay. that first week in October. Since we had the leap year this year, it kind of shifted things. So ours actually ends the last week in September. Oh. We do 13 markets Got it. starting that week after July 4th, 13 markets after that. This year it falls the end of September, usually goes through October. Interesting. Now, Marshall, you've been um, you've been involved with Sunnyside Farms in the Cottonwood uh, Farmers Market now for two years or four years. Four actually. years. This, this will be our fourth wow. year. Fourth year. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. It's good to have you on board. It's good to still be around. Man, I, I, I was on your Facebook page the other day, and and it's um, it's really interesting because I didn't know where to go. I thought, okay, well, I'll just I'll put in Sunnyside Farms Camp Birdie, and I did, and boom, Facebook came right up, and um, I went right on your page, and I, I'm seeing everything from from beef to um, eggs to poultry um, and it's all natural hormone free and um, so we'll be getting into that as well with Marshall in the second segment here but uh, um, I love seeing this stuff and then especially with the agricultural product you know we really like having farmers markets with with that, a lot of agricultural products because um, you know it's farmers it's farmers markets and so that's what we would like to have more so than anything and I know Jack uh, that's one of the things we try to do and so I'm glad Sunnyside Farms has been a part of that. Um, uh, Jack, tell me how long has the farmer's market been a part of the city of Cottonwood Parks and Recreation venue now? As long as I've been around. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, it predates me. Um, I don't know exactly when we started talking with Hezekiah. I used to run the program. He was doing it 2004, 2005. So it, it goes on. We're probably 17th, 18th, 20th, yes. somewhere, somewhere in there. Yeah, I, I, so. I think if I remember right, we started in 1998. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, somewhere been out around for a long there. time. Um, so now, does the venue change from year to year, um, or do we have the same people, same businesses, things of that nature here in the Verde Valley? Uh, you know, we're, we, the venue always stays the same. We are always located at the Old Town Activities Park, right. right there in the heart of Old Town. We're near all the restaurants, near all the shops. As far as the participants, we, we do see... Um, you see a lot of similar faces. We've been so lucky to have Sunnyside Farms and a couple other farms, Noguez Farms, and a couple of the other vendors come year in and year out and are dedicated to us. And then you see the other people who, who make it when they can, who make it when their produce comes in. Um, maybe I'm not here this week, but next week I'm here. So you, you do see that variety each week, um, but we also do have our strong vendors who come almost religiously every Thursday night. They're setting up at 3, getting the show going, and uh, people like Marshall, and they're really the ones who make it for us. So. Well, it's kind of nice with Marshall, too, in the context of Sunnyside Farms, um, is when, when you look at 
where, where we do this on a calendar basis. So we start in July. So you're getting mid-season, you know, mid-summer crops. And then by the fall time, you're actually getting, you know, a lot of your, your, uh, your pumpkins and your melons and everything else that are coming out in August, September. And so it's really kind of nice. So it's, it's a great thing as long as we're not disturbed by monsoon activity okay. and we, we don't have to cut the program short on Thursday nights. Um, you know, we're, we're doing good. But um, yes, now, what, um, uh, what's our main goal with this program? Uh, yeah, we, first off, we want to make sure that in our local communities, we're promoting healthy habits. And a way to do that is having our farmers market, letting them know, hey, there are healthy options out there. You may have to look for them, but we have those. So that's one of them is we, we want to change the thought process and we want to create that culture of healthy habits. Um, and that starts with your eating. So getting the farmers out here, getting them their produce out and just displaying that for them, it helps our culture as far as the health aspect goes. But then there's also things like WIC and uh, the EBT programs, the SNAP programs that all have their own farmer's market stuff that we, we are an approved vendor through um, the, who is it, Farmer's Market Nutritional Program, right, FMNP. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So we are an approved vendor, or we are an approved market through them. So people with WIC and people with EBT and the SNAP and all those, they can use their coupons to come and purchase fresh produce at our programs things like that and help create that healthy culture we're striving for. So, you know, I think the, in the, uh, the aspect of Parks and Recreation Agencies, Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department, um, this is a pretty established program. And, and mm -hmm. is, is that just because, um, you know, people love farmers markets or why? Um, I, I think it's a mix of things. I think that we've been around. We're, we're a name out there now. Um, our, our program has its its difficulties. We, we still struggle a little bit um, with farmers in the area, but I think we, we are a name out there now. I think a lot of people know about us. I think part of that is due to the great vendors that we get every year, the Sunnyside, the Noguez, the big farms who really have those professional displays. You come to our market and you're like, okay, I know those guys got something going on. I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna grab some cucumbers, I'm gonna grab some melons, I'm gonna grab some squash, whatever it is, you know, you know that they got it, you know that they're carrying it, and you can trust it. So I, I think that we we are a big name out there now, and I do think that we are an established market because of those reasons. So now we also have, this is the, the um, uh, the Cottonwood Farmers Market and Jamboree. Mm -hmm. What's a Jamboree? Everybody likes to dance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I thought. <laughs> so uh, we we really tried to make this an event. Um, the city of Cottonwood, as everybody knows, we are very big on events. Yes. And rather than just have the market, we wanted to create another dynamic to it, another mm -hmm. draw for that market to benefit us, to benefit the people at the market, and then to benefit the vendors at the market. Um, so we decided to start doing live music. Um, 15 years ago um, and since then you know it's turned into a jamboree every week we have a, a live band up there playing music boogieing down dancing yeah so you know it's 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 just a fun time it's another dynamic to the event. yeah and you know I, I think that as we look at entertainment this year's market um, involving the jamboree I mean I've um, you, you can see it um, right there on your your TV screen is is uh, that basically shows it it shows the guitar packed with uh, vegetables and fruits and uh, it's kind of a neat thing and you get an idea if you need to you can go right on to uh, www.cottonwood uh, az.gov slash parks and recreation um, and it'll come up and it'll actually you can go in uh, and take a look at who actually is playing what night and so um, we have a new band uh, as it comes about every Thursday night so um, what kind of uh, you know I, I guess what kind of genre can people expect out of this year's programming because um, I see it's a little different than last year. Yeah, you know, we we are constantly striving to to create a, a new exciting lineup every year. We've tried some things that, that have worked great. We've tried some things that maybe haven't worked so great. Um, but typical genre, you're looking at bluegrass, you're looking at blues, upbeat music. We do have um, the Knockabouts, which is Flagstaff's biggest Irish band. They tour all That's over awesome. the state, um, so they come down, and it, it's it's really a wide range. Um, you got two Can Eddie who's coming down um, from Tucson. You got Rudy Boy Experiment, who comes over from New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, we've had the Cadillac Angels, who travel from New Mexico. And then you got Lori McDonald. Everybody loves Lori McDonald. That's you know? right. So look, you do have a wide range and wide variety of different types of music. The genres, we're looking at bluegrass, blues. Um, you get some classical in there, things, classical rock, that is, things like that. So. All right. Well, you know, I, I, we're going to take a break here. Uh, 
and um, we'll be discussing more, especially with, with Marshall uh, Miglin and Sunnyside Farms, exactly, you know, what exactly do they do, their business, and what are they going to be bringing to the Cottonwood um, uh, Farmers Market Program. So um, uh, this is our end of our first segment. We've got two more to go, so uh, come on back, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about this. I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey. She's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch. That'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners. Alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And um, with us today is uh, um, Jack Teal, who's our Recreation Coordinator for Parks and Recreation and also our Recreation Center Programming. And we also have uh, Marshall Miglin and Marshall's with Sunnyside Farms. And you are the um, your owner grower. That's kind of your title. One of the owner of the owners oh, of the farm. Yes. Okay. Um, it's also myself and my uncle. Uh, Kevin Chester, who is another owner and grower of the farm. Well, tell us a little bit about Sunnyside Farms. What exactly is the farm? How many acres? What do you guys do? We're a total of 12 acres. Um, only about six of it is used for growing. Um, two acres actually for produce. The other five acres is more for um, pasture for the beef, uh, the chickens for the eggs, and currently we added pastured poultry, which is your meat chickens. Right. Um, we've been doing this now for, this is our fourth season. Uh, the property used to be used as a school. Um, we closed the school four years ago, okay. and instead of selling the property, we decided let's move on to the property and try to farm it. Wow. And um, I think that that's something is when you take a look at the Facebook page, um, I, I was really interested because um, we used to do our own meat chickens, and so um, you know we'd move them around. We had a um, we actually had a, a cage for them, um, and we actually moved it around so they would eat the grass and everything else in our property. And then um, it was just a constant thing. So I saw your chickens, and so you have both meat chickens, you have um, your regular poultry for uh, laying eggs, so you're, you're, um, you're egg producing as well. Yes. And so um, I, I think that um, um, as you produce and sell, is that exactly what you actually bring up our direction as well uh, at the farmer's market? What are we, uh, what are we expecting there? For most of the farmers markets, we usually try to bring our eggs and our produce. Okay. Um, this is our first year doing the pastured poultry, um, so we are currently working with the state on that, so we can do it legally and within health code. So we may not have it at the first few markets, but hopefully towards like the middle of the season and the end, uh -huh. and okay. then people can also you know come to the farm and purchase directly through us. Okay, so they can actually come right out to the farm then. Yes. And your location is is right off of General Crook Trail, right? And right I off mean, the two sixty. Two sixty. Yes. All right. So they just said that right there at the fork of the Y, um, they take the left hand and uh, right. Is is that correct? If so, you're coming off a general crook trail, yes, yes, you take the actually you take a right. Oh, you take a right. Okay, as if you're heading to Payson. Oh, gotcha. Right okay, two sixty. Okay, well now I know exactly where you are. Okay, we're right before um, White Bridge. Okay, right before White Bridge. Then, so uh, folks, if you're interested in um, everything from uh, hormone-free natural beef um, and um, eggs as well as poultry and vegetables, that's the place to go. Um, so. Um, and I was just going to ask you now. Um, I, I looked on so on Facebook. You actually have quarter sized um, beefs. Now, do you still have those available, or what? We just butchered our first round. Okay. So we are looking currently to get uh, new calves oh, right. and start over. So we are starting to put together a, um, basically a waiting list, 
and we do it on a first come first serve basis. So whoever pays their deposits first gets have, the beef. Gets the beef. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. That's neat. Um, so uh, you know, so how does someone actually get hold of you? Do you have a phone number? I know the again, facebook.com slash Sunnyside Farm uh, CV and is up on the screen right now. And do you have a uh, phone number? They, we do have a phone number. Um, they can get in contact with me directly at 480-760-1980. All right. Um, and if they do go on to Facebook on their mobile device, I do know we do have an instant call button on the Facebook page that you can click on that and it'll call me directly. Okay. So uh, same thing with any of your organic beef or anything, just give you guys a call then at that number. Yes. Um, now, uh, it, you say that you've actually been at the farmer's market then in Cottonwood for four years. And, and do you also then, you are at the Camp Verde farmer's market we, and the Sedona farmer's market? We do Camp Verde. Oh, you guys are busy. Uh, yes. <laughs> we do Camp Verde. Uh, Cottonwood on Thursday. We do Sedona's uh, winter market. We don't do this market at this time of the year. Okay. Uh, we do Flagstaff and we added Payson this year as wow. well. Wow. You are out and about. Yes. So, all right. And so, and again, that's for, yeah, four years in business. Now, um, uh, when we look at uh, hormone free beef, um, organic beef, what exactly is that? Let us know. Um, pretty much, we don't do anything with them. We put them out on pasture and we let them live a life that a cow is supposed to live. Let right. them wander, let them eat, and that's it. Okay. Uh, no reason to be pumping them with hormones to help fatten them up. Right. If they're given good grass and good food, they're going to do it on their own. They are. And yes. like I said, we just currently butchered our first round and the meat, everybody that's tried it, they love it. Yeah. So. Now, I, I, I found that out, which was rather interesting the other day, is, is I was um, asking my next door neighbor because um, he has pasture next to us and, and he's got a couple of, uh, they look like Hereford Cross. Uh, and um, when it first came over last year, it was the most gangly looking creature I've ever seen. I didn't realize that grass fed beef would actually get fat. And so all of my grass trimmings, um, he allows me to just dump over the side of his fence. As long as I don't work, use any herbicide on my, my backyard, which I don't because it, it just grows like crazy. Um, and it just kills out all the weeds. And so I dump everything over there. But those, those steers are fat. And I just didn't realize it. And someone always told me, well, you know, uh, you have to grain feed steers in order to get them fat. But that's not true. Because, man, they get the beef and they put it on. They pack it. They do. Yeah. And... A lot of people, I think, have fallen underneath that premise that they need the grain to finish them. But if they have a good pasture, there's plenty of food for them. There you go. So now you, um, you also pasture-raise chickens. And um, tell us the difference between pasture-raise versus free-range uh, versus cage-free. Because, you know, a lot of people get really confused there when they go to the market and they are in the store and they see cage-free eggs, you know, and I sit there and I go, yeah, I know where those are. Yes. Um, you know, they just uh, they stick them in a huge place and they jam them all together, and they're not in cages, but they're just jammed together, which uh, I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate. Yeah, and it's a hard one because the terminology. I've since we've been doing this now for four years, and we're still learning the terminology. It's really geared for you know the commercial grower. Like you said, they say cage free, but they're in a chicken house, and they still don't have sunlight. They're still not on pasture. Right and they can give them organic feed and then they can say it's organic cage-free chicken. Mm. Ours, we give them organic feed. We do use a chicken tractor, like you were saying, it's a, a small cage and that's primarily yeah. for, to keep them from predators. It's about yes. a 10 by 12 chicken tractor. We have about 60 birds in it at a time wow. and it's moved daily. Yes. That way they are on pasture, they're getting fresh grass, fresh air, sunlight, which most of the chicken that we're seeing in the stores, they're in these chicken houses and they're cage-free but they're in this house and they're just packed in there. Yeah. So the terminology has really been geared for, you know, the commercial grower because we do eggs as well. And what we found in the eggs is since we're a nest run and we're under 700 dozen a year, we can't use local or fresh. Oh, okay. That's There's, interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. So again, it's that whole thing with how terms in the marketing, you know, is it's kind of limited on what you can do and how you can phrase it. So wow. it's, it's interesting. That is. Yeah. So the regulations and the context there yeah. really can stymie sometimes. Yes. Um, 
you know, so um, as we look at this and we look at, um, and I remember because um, chickens will eat, eat grass like crazy. And uh, so that and when you move them to another area, you know, um, you don't really have to do anything with, with everything behind you because immediately you've got all the fertilizer and the grass comes right back up again. And so you're just moving the cage around all the way around the property. Yep. And so you've got a lot of areas in order to do that. Um, we're going to take another break here. We'll get back with Marshall on a little bit more information and Jack as well. We're going to take another one minute break and we'll come back for our third segment. Um, I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What? A sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. It's, it's my pleasure to have uh, Marshall Miglin with us uh, with Sunnyside Farms, as well as Jack Teal, which is... Uh, uh, Jack is just always uh, running constantly. I never see the poor guy standing still. Um, and uh, so I, my hat's off to you, Jack, because, man, you wear at least a dozen different hats and you're just doing everything. So I appreciate all the work you do. No um, Marshall, I wanted to just talk with you really quick as it pertains to your product and especially your agricultural products. And, and like we were talking, from month to month, sometimes that changes. And especially as we enter into the fall season, what are the products that you grow actually on you know, your vegetables and things? We we do a large variety from you know your typical tomatoes, cucumbers. Um, we did start adding some Asian greens like bok choy and tot soy. Uh, we do a nice salad mix, uh, usually typically four different heads of lettuce that we put into our mix. Uh, we added cantaloupe this year and some watermelon, so that should hopefully come in towards the end of the season. Um, we also have uh, kale, which is a really good one, the Swiss chard just a, a large variety. So we'll be bringing quite a bit to the market, you know, in the next few weeks and as the months go on. My, yeah, because I was sitting here, I'm going, you, you grow bell peppers, poblanos, um, sp spaghetti squash, butternut squash, eggplant, zucchini, yellow squash, cucumbers, beets, radishes. I mean, man, that's, that's a lot of stuff. And um, how many employees do you actually have working the farm? Uh, primarily myself and my uncle, occasionally our wives help and Sometimes we might get some volunteers from family and friends if we're lucky, but that's about just me and him. So, so we should let you go pretty quick so you can get back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I deeply appreciate it. Um, I'm going to move over to Jack here for just a little bit and talk about the actual farmer's market. Marshall, Marshall uh, thank you so much, man. And uh, again, thank you for being part of our, our uh, program. You're welcome. I mean, thank it's you, guys. Great. It's great. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity for our community more than anything. So, um, Jack, how many vendors do we normally? we have uh, at the farmers market uh, you know we have 52 spots mapped okay. out for vendors um, we, we've gone over that before um, we'll extend to about 60 um, sometimes but at any given time you have anywhere from 40 to 60 okay and um, so if I'm interested in selling goods such as agricultural items um, mm -hmm. or other items um, and I want to contact you on on registering how do how do I become a vendor then um, you know, we, especially for agricultural vendors, we try to make it as simple and easy as possible. All you have to do is fill out the application and show up. We don't charge you a spot fee. We don't charge you a business registration fee. It's 100% free for you if you're an agricultural vendor to come to our market. That's awesome. Um, it, it costs you what it takes you in gas to get there. Right. Um, as far as any other vendors, um, if you're selling arts and crafts or things like that, you're a hot dog vendor or something, what we do is you have to fill out your application. You have a $5 business registration fee, a one-time fee of that, so that'll cover you for the 13 markets, and then you have your $5 spot fee 
on a daily basis. That's still cheap. Yeah, it, we, we are still one of the most um, easily accessible farmers markets and one of the cheapest as well. Um, but we, we really try to make it easy and try to promote people coming out. It is a community event. It's something that we want to do. It's a service to our community. We love putting it on. We love getting people out there and we love having a good time. Great. So we, we try to streamline that process and make yeah. it as simple as possible. Yeah, you do a better job than what I used to do, so um, congrats on that. Um, it's always fun to see this program grow as well as you know thrive, and mm -hmm. that's the main thing. So, uh, so you just got the requirements of what the needs are if you're a vendor and how you can contact Jack. Uh, you know, and you can just get in touch with Jack at 928-639-3200. Uh, Ask for Jack Teal and um, he can get you set up and what, what you need to do and all of those additional requirements and for business license, et cetera, and your fees. Um, so what, what time can vendors actually show up and start setting up then? Um, vendor registration begins at 3.30. Okay. Um, so 3.30 every Thursday, we'll be out there, we'll be taking vendor registrations, getting you lined out in your spots, you'll be getting set up. That gives you about an hour and a half to get set up before we open the market to the public at five o'clock. Five o'clock until what time? Uh, it, it's posted till 9, but we typically go till dark, understanding that our market uh, begins in July, ends in September. Dark is, it's different every day. It it, it's one minute different just about every day. <laughs> so earlier in the season, you will be pushing close to that 8.30, 9 o'clock mark. Towards the end of the season, uh, 7.30, that's, that's about the sweet spot. All right. So we were talking about the, um, the atmosphere because the jamboree kind of mm -hmm. sets some of the tone as well. What is that atmosphere? Tell us a little bit about if you're walking into it and you know you're, you're seeing it. What is that? I, I think at, at first when you show up, you're you're going to see a nice laid back community event going on, and then once that music gets up and once people get up there, start dancing and hanging out, you start seeing the more lively crowd. It, it's right at right around dinner time, so people are coming either looking to get fresh produce for their dinner or they're mm -hmm. just coming from having a good time down in Old Town and looking for something to do. It's lively. It's fun. Everybody out there is always pleasant, having a good time. And then, of course, you get to see me and my beautiful face. Yeah. So <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> so everybody so, has a good time. Um, you know, uh, talk to us about the EBT or the WIC program. Yeah. Um, so the WIC program, Women, Infants, and Children, it, it's a program run through our local WIC resource department as well as the SNAP EBT program. Each one of those um, federally funded programs has a certain portion set aside for farmers markets specifically. Um, so if you're looking at the WIC program, they have what they call WIC coupons. And on that coupon, it'll say specifically $10 for the farmers market or $3 for the farmers market. And you can go to Marshall, who Sunnyside Farm is an approved vendor. Um, or you guys were at least last year. I, I assume are. you still are. Okay. So you, you can go up and you can trade that $3 ticket in, that $3 check-in, for three dollars worth of produce wow. um, from his booth, and if you haven't seen three dollars worth of produce, it can get you a lot at farmers markets. Yes. You're you're talking about a good sack of fruits and vegetables there. Um, some of them will be very specific. Some will say you have to get a loaf of bread and a carton of eggs and things like that. Um, so you have to be cognizant of what your ticket actually says. Now the SNAP program, the EBT program, they'll give you the same sort of ticket and those are usually monetary values, $8, $10, whatever it is. And you can take those to the vendor and th that same sort of exchange goes. Um, what you need to be aware of is that the vendors can't give you change back. So if you have an $8 coupon, make sure you're spending that $8 worth of coupon because as a vendor, they can't give you, you spent five, I'll give you $3 back. I got gotcha. That coupon is set for that amount, and once you use it, you need to make sure you're getting the goods for that amount. Gotcha, that's, uh, that's good information. I appreciate that. Um, now, so how does, how does this um, farmer's market impact our community? Um, I, mean, I know that we're talking healthy eating yeah. you know, and healthy lifestyles, and now we're talking also, okay, people that you know, can't really afford sometimes, they are, mm -hmm. you know, especially with WIC program and EBT, that's available also and which helps stimulate you know, mm -hmm. our, our community as well. What else? Absolutely, so uh, I think we have a very positive impact in the community. Um, a, one, we're an outlet for, for something to do on a Thursday night. What else are you gonna go do on a Thursday night? You're gonna go to the farmer's market, you're gonna have a good time. Um, I, I would like to think it's an ec economic stimulator. Right. You're, you're coming down, the exchange of money is happening, whether it's between you and the vendor, or whether you're going down having dinner in Old Town and then coming and watching the farmer's market bands perform, things like that. I, I do believe that it's an economic stimulator. We get anywhere from five to 800 people through there a night. 
coming into that area, experiencing Old Town, experiencing the atmosphere there. And then that exchange of money is always good for not only the market, but for the vendors and the Old Town merchants and everybody coming down to the area. So I do think it's a, a very positive impact. It is, I think it's a great stimulus um, in that context as well. Like you said, um, you know, coming down to the market, um, also take advantage of you know coming down to Old Town because mm -hmm. Old Town's, um, it's it's pretty incredible location and uh, it's got some really incredible um, storefronts and everything else and you know the uh, eclectic stores that are all throughout the area as well as the incredible restaurants and so uh, come down and join us on Thursdays we're starting off again on uh, this coming week uh, July 7th all the way through September 29th and uh, so we welcome you to, to be here at our farmers markets on Thursday nights and again hopefully we'll get some good rain this year but we won't maybe blast out our farmers market so much. Um, I just want to thank uh, Marshall as well and Sunnyside Farms. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're pleased that you're always part of our program and proud that you're with us. Jack, thank you very much for also uh, explaining all of the, the farmers market programming here for Cottonwood, Arizona. And I just wanted to uh, let the public know that um, again, any information that you would like, just give us a call at the Parks and Recreation Department at the Recreation Center here in Cottonwood at uh, 639-3200. If you need additional information, special, uh, especially pertaining to vendoring, uh, vendoring and the circumstances there as vendors, uh, or just want to show up and, and buy produce. Um, we're going to close the show today. Thank you for joining us at Inside Cottonwood. Um, your host, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. Have a great day.